Coming to you live from Pier 17 in the South Street Seaport and brought to you by delicious Heineken beer. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen, Kevin Durant made an appearance on First Take today and he addressed potentially coming back this season. Let's listen to KD. Have you completely ruled out the possibility that you can return? Yes. You're done. We won't see you at all this year in a Brooklyn no. Nets uniform. No, I'm playing on it. Jalen, I love this from KD. Just kill the speculation, kill everything. There's no chance I'm playing this year. What do you think about it? No surprises. Due to time, he got injured in the NBA Finals. It takes 9 to 12 months to recover from an Achilles injury. He had a calf injury prior to having that Achilles injury. So when you sign him as the Nets, you understand that he's not going to play this year. He basically understands that he's not going to play this year. So no surprises for me. Not that surprising, but what was surprising is this. We all remember what happened in Los Angeles during a break in the action when him and Draymond Green went back and forth. And we made a big deal of it in the media. And I thought at the time maybe we overblew the incident in the media. Well, apparently not. He was asked whether or not that was a factor in him leaving the Warriors, and you'll be shocked by his response. Did that play a role in you leaving Golden State? A little bit, yeah, for sure. Do you want to expand, expand on that at all? Yeah, I mean, if, I mean, your teammate talked to you that way. You think about it a bit, but, you know, we talk, like I said, we talked about it, but definitely, for sure, I'm not going to lie about it. Jalen, that was very early in the season for him to say it played a role in his decision to leave the Golden State Warriors. What do you make of that? I remember coming on this program the day after that happened, and I said, when KD leaves, because everybody knew that he was going to leave, including his teammates, Draymond Green will not be the scapegoat for a lot of people because of that incident. Mm. I'm glad he said a little bit, which goes into my line of thinking of not it didn't mean everything. Yep. It meant something, but it was not the reason. Everybody anticipated KD wanted to join the Warriors in order to chase championship glory. He was able to do that. Back-to-back -back finals MVPs. Once that was achieved, he also said that didn't make him as happy as he thought that it would. Mm. So I'm not surprised that he left. You're not surprised that he left. I just, again, want that segment of people that's going to try to make Draymond be the scapegoat. Or No, the people that work in this industry already anticipated KD was leaving. One thing I like about the new KD is I just like how honest he's being. Like, he goes on Twitter and he just he shares his feelings with us. And in my mind, even if Draymond, that incident and Draymond's behavior did play a role in me leaving, I probably wouldn't share that into a microphone on national television. But KD's just open and honest with us, and I am all the way here for it. And Jalen, there's been so much that happened last night and this morning in the world of sports that we had a game between two of the best team in the Eastern Conference and almost feels like an afterthought. The Celtics were trailing by 19 in the second quarter, came all the way back to win, a pretty decisive win at that, and they had a breakout performance from Kemba Walker with 32 points, 6-6. Six and six. What do you like what you saw from Kemba? So these are two teams to me that have opposite strengths. For the Boston Celtics, I think their strength is on the perimeter. You show mm -hmm. Kimba, smart plan D. Gordon Hay was scoring and playmaking. And you know about Jason Tatum and obviously Jalen Brown, who they just gave a big-time contract to and is well-deserved. And for the Bucs, their strength clearly is the reigning MVP, the Greek freak at seven foot tall and both of the Lopez's. Yep. So it was a contrast of style watching this game. And it made me realize something. What's that? The Celtics are a bad matchup for the Bucs. Hmm. If you really look at the players on the perimeter for the Bucs, Bledsoe and George Hill, like the guys that are getting minutes other than Middleton, the Celtics had the advantage at a lot of those matchups. And when you hmm. can keep the Greek freak on the perimeter, that negates a lot of the size that makes the Bucs have that advantage. And now we're able to rebound, you're able to get out in transition. So that's the thing that really stood out to me when I watched this game.
Well, you mentioned keeping the Greek freak in the perimeter, and a lot of people correlate free throw percentage and free throw behavior with having a jump shot and how you're going to shoot it in the action of the game. Well, that's not good news for Giannis Antetokounmpo, who took to the free throw line and did this. Take a look at him. He's getting warmed up, you know, make it, get, doing it without the ball. Then when he does it with the ball, pretty much the same result. I mean, he didn't just miss that one. He missed it by like two inches. That was the first of two, mind you. And here's the second of two. Two straight Jalen Rose. Two straight air ball free throws. I'm going to do the media thing and read too much into this. I understand everyone, everyone, everyone has air balled a free throw before. But to reset and to do it twice in a row, that indicates something bigger to me. Am I doing too much when I say that? Absolutely um, indicates something, David Jacoby. In the offseason, we talked about the leap in Ben Simmons game and would he be able to shoot and make shots outside of the paint. We celebrated as well as his teammates when he made one in preseason. We talked about it on this show, and I said, I don't believe that's going to transfer to the season because them celebrating like that means that he's not de doing it in practice. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing for the Greek freak. A terrific player, but you can tell the physicality of every and his mechanics are there, but mentally, it's not there. And so, not one air ball, but consecutive air balls lends you to believe that 15 foot shot does not translate into a guy making three point shots at almost 24 feet. So, this is something we should be monitoring for the near future. Absolutely. Our friend and colleague Jackie Mack had a report a couple days ago about the behavior of Kyrie Irving, and then we heard from his coach and his teammates, and we finally heard Kyrie's response to the criticism. We'll play that for you right after this.